Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it is Saturday, which means it is date night, or at least tonight is date night. It's earlier in the day. And typically when I know it's a date night, I like to do my everything shower early in the morning and do a hair mask, which I've already done. I've actually already done my hair, like I've styled it. I did some curls throughout it. I'm gonna have to touch it up later, but I'm not worried about that right now. But I also love doing face masks. So I figured I would sit down and film a spa night chit chat video. And then I actually plan on filming two videos. So this one and then another one, which is gonna be basically just me reintroducing myself to makeup as someone who enjoys makeup. I used to have a very large collection of makeup. Like it was truly disgusting. Overconsumption was very popular back in the day and I definitely took part in it regrettably. Now I've definitely sized down my collection. Like I still have a decent amount of makeup, but I don't have the insane amount that I used to have back in the day. Luckily, I've done away with it. I've realized how wasteful it is and just unnecessary it is. Like, yes, it's aesthetically pleasing, I guess, to some people, but for me, I like to have things that I know I'm gonna use and not waste my money on. If you're just sitting at home and looking for something to do, well, let's just grab a face mask and have a little chat, shall we? Let's get started. Before I get started, I feel like I wanna say one more thing. I talked about it in the first video that I made, like my return video, I guess, about how like one of the most popular comments I used to get back in the day when I used to do my Spawn and Chichet videos was when I used to wear the big, you know, headbands with the big bow on it. And people would talk so much shit about how like I'm a grown ass adult using these things that are meant for children. It's like, why do people feel the need? Like I said it in the video too. Why do people feel the need to put an age limit on everything except not being a judgmental like asshole you know what i mean so i figured for those special people because i know they'll still be here anyways i figured i would update my headband to something a little bit more ridiculous to give you guys something else to talk about because i don't care first of all i just want to say the reason i'm choosing to use these is because these have been hanging on my wall for about a little under a year now we went to galaxy's edge in disney last November. And I don't want to tell you the ungodly amount I spent on these ears. And I didn't even realize it until I was already paying, like at the desk paying for it. I'm going to use the shit out of these ears in my spa night chit chat videos and probably in my makeup routine video because these were so expensive for what they are. Like they're just literally just Yoda ears, but I, well, usually what happens when I go to a Disney park, I like to buy ears at every park that I go to. And so at this day I saw these and I was like, oh my God, they're so cute. I just literally grabbed them, didn't even check the price, just ran to the desk because we had to leave because we were meeting up with the family to go to dinner that night. And I ch when, the, when, the, when the lady, the cashier rang up the tag and I saw the price. My first big mistake was not realizing that these are actually lounge fly exclusives for Star Wars that I think are only sold at Galaxy's Edge. And so in my mind, I'm like, who the f spends 75 to 85? I think I've even seen some for like $90 on little backpacks, let alone spending almost $60 on these ears. It's me. Funny story, the clip you just watched was filmed yesterday. Today is Sunday, so it's the next day after date night. Yeah, yesterday was kind of a clusterfuck, I'm not gonna lie. Like, after I filmed that last clip, things kind of just started going crazy. I, yesterday was a day before date night, but I'm happy to say that date night was a complete success. We had an amazing time. We went to dinner and uh, honestly, I've never had a bad experience at the restaurant that we go to. It's my favorite in this area. And then we went to go see The Expendables 4. I wasn't going to go because I didn't get sleep the night before, but then I thought about it. I was like, eh, I really want to see the movie. Like I, I know, and it makes Stephen happy too, because he's a big, he's a big, action movie person um he went to school for film and so filming film and things like that that's his passion in life so we ended up linking up with his best friend nate i talked about him on my channel before if you watch this video that's just for you we had a great time it was a really it was a really good time it was a lot of fun normally when the three of us hang out we have a lot of fun i'm not gonna lie like we fit so perfectly together i feel like all three of us as friends and obviously me and my fiance but it just feels natural with the three of us hanging out so all right so for today's face mask i'm gonna use the gold fatten md solution facial detox clarify and clear mask so i actually had a completely different topic to discuss for today's video um and so i'm kind of glad that it didn't work out to film yesterday because 
as I got to thinking about the topic, because I was going to discuss things like being kinder to yourself and being more gracious to yourself, which is very important still. But there are some other things that I came across on the subreddit um, for the beauty community here on YouTube. I think it's called like Beauty Guru Chatter. I've been part of it for many, many, many years. I'm going to be honest with you, like there are times where I don't agree with anything that's posted on there. But then there are times where I do find that I am inspired to have a conversation and this is one of those times. So this particular thread was discussing Jessica Braun. Um, she used to be, I think it was Jam Beauty 89 back in the day. Um, her name is Jessica. She has a husband named Tyler and two kids. And she, I mean, she does do a lot of content still related to makeup, a lot of like drugstore hauls and things like that. But truly, I feel like a lot of her content nowadays revolves around like vlogs and things like that. And they do a lot of like travel vlogs as well. The discussion was about how out of touch they are because they just purchased a, I think it's a condo or something. They just purchased a condo to make into their office um, for filming and things like that. I know Tyler has his own business. He's a travel, like a big travel agent specifically. I think it's specifically about Disney, but I think he also does offer like other trip, planning services as well for other places not just disney and so the conversation was about how out of touch they seem to be nowadays because they purchased a condo only really at this point to use as an office um for them to work out of and a lot of people had a lot of issues with it just because you know there is a housing crisis right now people cannot afford to live in the places that they live in um, I'm not sure where they are, like where their home base is. I'm not, I'm, I don't really follow them that, that intently, but I do know, you know, there is a housing crisis and, and you know, that is a very valid point to make. And people were like really nasty in the comments about this situation. And it got me thinking about like in general about relatability and these content creators here on YouTube, even on TikTok, I feel like there's a huge disconnect between some of the larger creators and then just people who are viewers. This topic has been discussed quite a bit with a lot of creators that I watch. As a matter of fact, one of the most recent creators that has brought up this subject in a recent video was Tara Michelle. And she's someone, I mean, she has over a million subscribers. She's been very successful throughout her career on YouTube. And I used to watch her like many years ago when she first started and I really liked her content. I liked her personality and I felt like she was someone that I could relate to at one point. But more recently, she's another person who has been kind of called out for being out of touch or unrelatable by her subscribers. I mean, every other video on her channel is her traveling somewhere in the world and she's there. Like she just did a very long extensive stay in the south of France with a friend of hers. And she, I mean, she does live a very lavish lifestyle. She does. And I guess for people who watch her channel, like me from the beginning, who watched her from her humble beginnings to be where she is now. I mean, I see things differently. I see someone who has you know, been successful and they've made a great life for themselves doing this content creating here on YouTube and other platforms. Probably the most popular creator that I've discussed in this video, Jackie Ina. She's another one who is constantly, not ridiculed, but she's definitely called out a lot on TikTok specifically for living a very lavish lifestyle. And I just never, I never understood that. It's like she's earned everything she's ever gotten every cent she's ever made like she has a very successful candle brand um she's a successful creator here on youtube like really successful so it's like why are we going to talk shit about people who are just successful i don't know i'm gonna open the conversation up to you guys how do you guys feel do you guys believe that content creators should maintain some level of like relatability. So to finish off this video, I figured we would just kind of chit chat and kind of close things up in regards to the Rob Beauty Christie and James Charles situation, because I honestly, I don't feel like we're gonna get anything from this girl. I, I really, I really don't. And people are amped up about it still. People are very pissed off. And honestly, I, I wish I could say that I was surprised that, that she supports him or you know likes his pictures or whatever but i'm really not i'm really not surprised i wanted to address a few things that i'd seen in my last video where i talked about this 
And in that video, I mentioned how upset I was that Manny was one of the creators who has publicly been following James and liking pictures and all this shit. Like, I think there was even a picture of all them together at like some sort of event for another brand or whatever. But anyways, I digress. The reason why I feel so fucking like strongly and passionate about this situation and why I'm so against these creators liking pictures and following him again and working with him again and all these things, the reason why it bothers me so fucking much is because I was a victim of child grooming, okay? I, I was abused as a child in the worst way possible. To this day, it bothers me knowing that there are people who are friends with my abuser. To be very open and honest with you guys, I don't think I'm capable of talking about this situation in an unbiased way. But I don't feel like that really matters in this because I'm speaking my truth about things and really, it uh, everything that I went through as a victim aligns beautifully with this this situation and so in my eyes this was the right time to talk about what I went through because it gives a good example of why I'm unable to simply look past these creators who have decided to realign themselves with James because it reminds me so much of every person and there was only a few actually of every person who decided, despite knowing what my abuser did to me, they decided that it wasn't important enough to them. Like that my friendship and what I went through with them, no matter how long we were friends before this point, it didn't matter what this person did in the past to me. Because in their minds, we were both young. While yes, we were both young, he was considerably older than me. I've seen people making the excuse for James. Oh, he was young. He'll learn. He'll do better. But where has he done better? That's a valid fine. I'll give it to you for the first time. But there wasn't just a first time. There was a pattern of the same thing happening over and over and over again. And so it is very hard for me to believe that every incident that he had after the first time was just another mess up. Oh, I messed up again. Oh, I messed up again. I'm sorry, you did not mess up again. That's a pattern of behavior. Don't get me wrong. I'm a sucker for a good redemption arc. Love redemption arcs when they're done for the right person. James Charles is not the right person. James Charles does not deserve a redemption arc in my eyes. Anybody who is capable of doing what he did does not deserve a redemption arc, okay? Like, uh, that's just the way I see things. You may disagree with me, and that's fine. But that brings me back to the point that I was trying to make about Manny in the beginning, and I apologize for the long tangent that I went off on, but I digress. Manny realigning himself with James hurt me so much because I've supported him and defended him for so many years. And of course, like, he doesn't owe me anything. Like, let, I'm just being honest. I'm aware of that. He owes me nothing. Whatever choices he makes in his life do nothing to affect me specifically. But it hurts me knowing that he could align with somebody who is capable or who has done something as disgusting as what James has done and done multiple times. As a matter of fact, Manny and I were able to actually connect privately and it was because of Sam, here for the tea, RIP, miss you girl so much. Sam was a very big supporter of my channel. Like she would DM me and ask when my next video was coming up or what topics I was gonna talk about. Like she was very supportive of me as a creator and I never got to thank her for that. I mean, I have before, but towards the end, I wasn't able to really thank her for supporting me so much throughout the years. And it's because of Sam that I was able to talk with Manny directly a couple different times. Like she facilitated that conversation happening. And I loved talking to him. And it felt like I was talking to somebody that I could be friends with. And obviously we were not friends that I know of. Um, I'm not saying that we had some sort of like amazing connection at any capacity, but what I'm saying is I was so happy that I was able to connect with somebody that I supported for so long, but it felt like I was talking to somebody who was a friend where we had history and it just it was so nice to talk to him and so because of those private conversations that i've had and the support that i've had for him for so many years that's why i feel so upset about this because as a victim myself to watch someone that you've supported 
and stood by and defended for so, so long to do something like this. It's very disheartening. It sucks. Okay, I went and washed my face. My skin feels great. Like right here, it feels so soft and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and moisturize now using the First Aid Beauty Oil Control Moisturizer. My skin drinks this stuff up. It loves this moisturizer. So in closing, um, I know I kind of ended things on a very heavy note and I apologize for kind of trauma dumping on you. But the conversation, I mean, I feel like I wanted to talk about this in the last video, but I don't think I was ready to, especially with in regards to my traumas and what I went through as a victim of, of grooming in the past. But I, I couldn't, I felt like this situation was so relevant and what I went through was relevant to this. I mean, even as I'm filming, like I thought about it, I was like, should I include my traumas into this? And I was like, no, this is a very, like, it's very relevant. It, it's, it's re it correlates too too closely with this topic for you not to discuss it and honestly it's I, I just i can't look past it because of what i went through i can't and so that's why i said so bluntly in my last video that you know history will not be kind to the people who decide to stick by james or people like colian ballinger like jojo siwa just like i think it was like last week or the week before had gone on a podcast with i think it was like howie mandel or something like that and was so like defending Colleen and her friendship with Colleen. And it's like, people just don't care. Unless it impacts them directly, people aren't gonna give a shit. And I don't expect Manny or anybody else to watch this. I don't think they ever will, honestly, or even to listen to what I have to say or my experiences on the matter. I don't expect anyone to change what they do in their lives for me, for my expense, you know what I mean? Like nothing that I do in my life affects Manny and vice versa. But I will say your behaviors and what you choose to do online and post to all your followers, you know, it, it's it's gonna hold, have an impact. Like it, there's gonna be an impact somewhere. And so as a victim myself, I know that I'm not the only one. And I'm sure there are hundreds, if not thousands of people like me who were victims of this, who are also followers of these creators, these various creators like Raw Beauty Christie and Manny and Laura and whoever else follows James now. Um, and they're watching you realign yourself with someone who exposed themselves, admitted to being a groomer, and were exposed multiple times for doing the exact same thing. It's going to have an effect. It may not be immediate. It may take a while. But you're going to see that the decisions that you make to stand behind an abuser in any situation, you will catch karma for that. All these people are now watching you realign yourself with someone similar to the very person who caused them trauma that will last them a lifetime. Is it worth it? I sure hope so. With that being said, I am done for today and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.